Um, yes, so we thought um, we had been getting some feedback that people wished that the unified board meeting was easier for them to attend. So we talked, I talked to Dave and Christine, and we decided that the unified um, board would go first. So um, that's why we've sort of flipped the order um, for tonight. So we'll call the meeting to order at 6 p.m. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? I don't have enough. But okay. I think they're fine. Uh -huh. On my side. Okay. Um, we have public comment. Yes, Bridget. Hi, Bridget Taylor, South Royalton. If I hit anybody, I'm sorry. Um, I have some questions about um, a little praise and a lot of questions. Um, I was very pleased to have the principal decision announced to the high school students. Um, I'm not pleased about the number of questions I have left and about, frankly, the rest of the process of communication. Um, there was a press release. It went up on Facebook. There has been, to this date, no email um, announcing the principal, the high school principal or the elementary principals. Um, and I'm not sure what the structure is of these two schools at this point. I know there's a principal at what used to be South Royalton High School and is now White River High School. You know what I'm talking about. White River Valley High School. White River Valley High School, thank you. I know there's one elementary school, principal, I'm not sure if he's working at one building or both buildings. Two elementary schools. There's actually two campuses, one school. Right. Okay. Oh, and let her finish. Sorry. No, that's trying to be helpful. No, that, that's helpful. Um, I'm not sure who the middle school principal is, if that's still up in the air, if that's been decided. Um, I'm not sure what the process is that got us to that point. I'm not sure how, by as far as I can tell, the vice principal at Bethel, who I had to look up and Google to figure out was the vice principal in Bethel, because that wasn't in the press release or the announcements, and again, didn't get an email. Um, and apparently the uh, principal at the Wickham schools have their jobs or a job. And as far as I know, the South Royalton administration basically had a flashing question mark. And that may not be true, but that is the perception. And that's the other, kind of the second half of the comment I'm making, which is that there's a lot of room for rumors when you don't communicate. There have been a lot of rumors. Some of them I've heard from students. Some of them I've heard from my students. Some of them I have heard on Facebook. Some of them I have heard, I don't think I've heard any at Arby's recently, but you know what I mean. Um, it feels a little bit like these decisions were made in some kind of black box. And I'm not comfortable with that at all. Uh, especially with two towns coming together, I feel it's extra important and vital to have communications be as clear, as transparent, and as honest about what's going on as possible. I'm very disappointed that as a community we weren't asked to weigh in on what we wanted in leadership, either in an abstract sense or in the sense of the leaders we knew at South Royalton. And I feel like it's a lot of missed opportunity and a lot of room for resentment, honestly, at a period in which we want our kids to be working together, to be seeing each other as one community. Um, and so that's where I'm at. And so if someone could clarify, are the positions clarified in leadership in the four schools, no, three schools, two campuses, that there are now, um, and how Hopefully, we're going to improve these communications going forward. Thank you. So to address that, if I may, um, I'll do you one better. Um, we've, we've been having these structural conversations ongoing throughout a lot of the structural meetings as we were trying to get people acquainted with what we were going to do with the merger. And uh, it was something that we, as a full board, did talk about often about I was I was quite emphatic that I didn't want to have one. I was not suggesting that we have one person cover two elementary schools. That that just seemed to be like a 
concern to me that there would be something going on one place or the other. So we decided, and I recommended the board, um, that we have a team approach for the two elementary schools with, with both uh, two administrators for the elementary, and that they would share that, not necessarily being dedicated to Royalton or dedicated to Bethel, but the two of them would, would get the job done together. Um, and that's still the plan. Um, so, so one principal and one vice principal? Not necessarily, no. It, it, we had to go out and search and see what we could find. No, I mean, is that where we are now? No, we are at two principals. Okay. And uh, sitting to my right is David Wells, who is the elementary principal who I has been hired. <laughs> and I'm Hello. pleased to introduce him to you now. Uh, David has not had a whole lot of time to be in the buildings. I think he was on a uh, conference call with the staff uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. and uh, they had some decision making that they had to have uh, done, and so that's what he was doing. The middle school would be is is proposed or is set to be run by uh, Mr. Bradley, right there, and uh, so uh, and. The, uh, I'd like to introduce the second person on my left here, Reed McCracken, who is the high school principal. So, uh, and we talked about this the other night at a uh, meeting with the teachers, high school teachers, and the question was, who's going to tell the kids? And, and I said, I'll tell the kids. So I, the next day I went over, stood in front of them, then came over here to Bethel and stood in front of them. Um, and we told them what what was going on and I kind of challenged them to get involved in the remaining decisions teacher decisions the AD co-curricular decision and the other things that still needed to be selected uh, and they have uh, no reason to that occasion I understand there are 33 kids on the Royalton list and I don't know how many here but probably a comparable amount so we're gonna have to now figure out how we can get them involved in that, get them all or most of them involved in the process uh, going forward. We have a lot of positions to fill, uh, people that have left us, and uh, it's pretty normal for that to happen year to year, but uh, we've got a lot to do, and, uh, and so uh, we've been talking about how can we get those ki the kids involved. And, and the staff involved in, in what what happens next. So, as far as the press releases, um, as soon as some of the uh, discussions were happening, um, I and I kind of felt like unless we got a press release out immediately, that we were going to get a lot of rumors and things like that. I did didn't handle the emails, but I did do the press releases. Uh, and I tried to get them done as, and out to the papers uh, as quickly as possible. We had reporters calling me, and I was just uh, afraid that I needed to, you know, get get there as quickly as possible and get it done. So um, we do have scheduled for the newsletter this week. Um, uh, it's going to be about the administrative team and introducing them a little bit more and how that's going to work. So look for that when, when they come out on Wednesday or Thursday. Yes, Nancy. Um, what are the drafts and minutes supposed to be? No, I know it's public knowledge, so. Um, I think it's supposed to be within about 24 hours. Okay, I've looked all over on the computer again to find the minutes, and I cannot. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Okay. I looked up the new name, the old name, and I don't care what name. Which means? But I couldn't find them. So. I have asked before to have published mm -hmm. a, a one simple little place to put them and put it in a um, newspaper. This is where you go if you want to read the minutes, the drafts, whatever. And it's still not done. So I am personally very, very upset not being able to find what I look for. Right. So if there's any way, and that would have stopped a lot of this too. Yeah. I'll also note that when the minutes did go up, and it was corrected once they knew about it, but, well, no, I'm not actually sure it was corrected as soon as they knew about it. I got sent an, a note 
I got sent the letter as an attachment, but when the minutes first went up, the letters from the teachers was not connected. It was a dead link. Okay. Um, and when I checked after she sent it to me, it still hadn't been fixed. Hopefully it got fixed, you know. I know how it is. It's like, oh no, I have to send everything out and then I have to fix the link, so hopefully that's what happened. But that was probably an extra six to eight hours where people went to click on that and it, and it didn't happen. Right, there because was a PDF. Because for, for the one person who complains, there's four people who go, mm. Right, yep. I embedded the PDF and then it was a dead Yeah, end, I, so. it, you know, it's, it, people are human. It, I'm not blaming anybody for it. I'm just saying that was, you know, one more step to, one more barrier to getting the full minutes in. Okay. It's there. Great. And live. Yes, over here. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> um, people say their name, so. Yes, um, can you say your name so that? Just to piggyback on what Nancy said, I need to clarify as. Okay. Um, the minutes for the meetings aren't created within 24 right. hours. Okay. I think it's three days. It's, three days. I, I can't, I know it's not 24 hours. It's either it three four? or five days. Okay. And so, um, okay. okay. Thanks for the clarification, Christine. I just needed to make sure there wasn't a false yes. element there. I appreciate that. So five days to post the minutes. Unless it's a Okay. Yes. Um, I'm Olivia Gibson. Uh, as a representative of the student body, I'd like to take this as an opportunity to highlight some of the concerns and the stance of the involved members of South Royalton High School. Numerous times students have stepped forward and made it clear that we feel unheard, uninvolved, and misled during the process of merging South Royalton and Bethel School, especially at the February 9th student gathering where many topics of importance rose to the surface and were never fully addressed. Blank pieces of paper were hung up on the walls of our school and we were instructed to sign up. These signups were not followed through with and it gave little context for what action was going to be taken. Students had to then reach out for further information and were then emailed, yeah, we were emailed a list of possible committees to join. On May 8th, we were told it was too bad that students were not a part of the hiring process for our new principal and were then suddenly encouraged to formulate our own student voice committee for the purpose of electing representatives for the hiring committee for the athletic director and co-curricular director position. We have done such and we have done in a matter of days what was promised to us months ago. We want to stop being congratulated for performing the basic duties of an involved student body and start receiving real answers on topics that matter to us. Thank you. Thank you. Are you guys? I didn't know if you were. If that was a complete. Okay. All right. Thank you. So we heard loudly and clearly, I think, the meeting that we had with teachers last week. Um, as a board, we expressed um, that it's our expectation moving forward that students be fully engaged in these hiring processes. Um, and, and I think that that's what's happening now. I think we need to regularly meet, and what we did was set up meeting time with the teachers and the board, so our first meeting will be on the 21st, so that hopefully we know better or sooner um, what the pieces are that we might be missing. Um, this is the most well-attended meeting we've had in months, um, and I appreciate all of you coming here uh, with your concerns and thoughts and questions because we need healthy communication. Yes, Bridget. Bridget from South Rising Event. I guess one of my questions is how we've had other meetings. We've talked about, as Olivia said, mm -hmm. we talked about incorporating student voices and a little part of me feels like a sucker for not coming to more meetings and saying at every meeting, how are we incorporating student voices because I had trust that mm -hmm. those conversations were going to be followed through. And I'm hoping that this time these conversations are going to be followed through, but it's harder to trust. Right. right. I understand that. Yeah, 
Andrew. I do think now that we have a leadership team in place that we have going forward, it'll be you know easier, like with with kind of the interim situation in South Wales. You know, we kind of have a leadership vacuum in some senses, and you know we need to do what we can to make sure communication goes forward but you know we're not in the building and we can't do it. so you know I, I'm hoping going forward that we'll be able to you know with more dialogue with the teachers and a kind of leadership going forward in place that we'll be able to improve this um, going forward so and we're aware of it and I, I'm just concerned about that because as we all know it was talked about it was identified as a priority area you guys even spoke about coming into the classroom and talking with some students if it could be arranged and that was exciting um, and I'm not sure any of that happened well, um, I think, I think and I'm not saying that it was even feasible for that to happen um, just you know there were there were some really good ideas for engagement there and then you know this little gap of silence and oh hey guess what everyone's been hired not everyone uh, there's a leadership structure and no one's as answered my question as to whether the full leadership structure is in place and, and the full um, who, who the full staff administrative staff is so do we are the two the four administrators, the four administrators? Right so right the now. former vice Won't principal of Bethel is now the co-principal of the elementary schools. There's no okay. vice principal in Bethel. There's no oh, vice principal. I'm sorry. We have I misunderstood. To, we have to take some formal steps tonight in, in non-public to talk about uh, various adjustments that we have to make. Okay. Um, I don't want to characterize the fact that there has been no student voice in anything. When we hired a um, interim principal, there was a student committee that was involved in Which that. Was great. Um, and, and, and I think I don't understand why you didn't just repeat that process since people seem really happy. Well, um, it's um, <laughs> complicated. I it, guess you want to say. Like, well, I mean, explain it. Then. Explain it. And I, Joanne Melanson and I have been good friends for probably 35 years, and I didn't feel for the committee uh, going forward that I could be a part of this second. The, the hiring of the principal, the future principal. That's understandable, but you're one person. Well, I was the one that organized the interim process. So, um, and so that detail about with the kids, and I, I basically um, apologized to them when I met with them, uh, both, both groups, because uh, I felt like we should have uh, realized that they should have been included. Uh, I did get involved in this but to check references at the end and, and uh, we did a, a site visit with David uh, to see you know what what he was doing at his current school and but uh, you know I, I was out of the process until the end and uh, it, you know I, I'll say it again I, I met it and, and I said it to them. Uh, that it was it was too bad that, that it didn't happen that way, but All I can try to do now is to try to make it up to them as we go forward for the remainder of the things that are happening so um, And Joanne's done a great job, and I don't want it misconstrued about that. There is no been no vacuum It, it has been she's done a nice job while she's been I don't there. think yeah. any of us who South Wales had any issues with but I think I, we're just to clarify, when I said vacuum, I more meant about this specifically because Bruce was stepping out and she was part of the process. So you know, there wasn't really a link between the board and the students in the building. So I don't, didn't want to say leadership vacuum, but you know, anyway, she's done a great job. Sorry. Uh, speaking of student voice, sorry, um, I don't want to cut off any discussion, but we have four students here to give a presentation and we had made a commitment to their families that they were early on in the agenda and I don't know if it would be possible. Uh, this room is probably three or four times more crowded than we had told them when they were preparing for the meeting so i um, wondering if it's possible to get them to do their presentation within the next couple of minutes if that is okay with the board and the, and the room. And I apologize for asking that. It's all right. We do have another public comment on the agenda. Um, 
So if there's anyone who feels like they need to share um, earlier on, then anyone else who has commitments and then wants to go, then you could go during this public comment. Otherwise, I would entertain having the, the student presentation go right now. There's two student presentations. Right, the two. The, it's what, BCAT and, and also the, the trip, Nature's Classroom. So. Do you want to go? Okay. Um, Eliza, maybe I'm a junior at South Wilson. Um, I guess I'm kind of speaking on behalf of upcoming seniors. Um, of course, the consolidation of two schools is a long and difficult process, and there will be a certain degree of hardship when it comes to settling into a new school. Um, but going into my senior year, I need to make sure that the process isn't going to take away from, I guess, the most crucial and final year of my high school education. Is there a specific piece that you're concerned about? Well, I guess like making sure that I have like guidance on like, you know, my like future steps like college wise or like, you know, classes that I might have to take next year. Okay. Some of those key things that are kind of important. Mm hmm Absolutely. And did you want to go now as well? Yeah. Uh, Kylie Hubbard, also a junior from South Oregon. Um, I have a couple of things that students had asked that were spoken. Uh, more work went into making sure every student voted on school colors and mascots than for making sure students were a part of hiring the new principal. Superintendent Bruce Lab said on May 8th, no important decisions have been made yet. Can he explain how hiring the principal for our high school is not an important decision? And then our last statement was, uh, when will we be receiving the formulated schedule? Because at this time uh, in our school, usually AP homework is being assigned for the summertime. So it's kind of important to know. Mm -hmm. Can I address that? I think uh, that statement is partly, partly out of context. Uh, I went and announced to you who the principal was going to be. And when I was addressed by the students, about you you made the important decisions. I said, no, there are still important decisions that need to be made. And uh, so that was the context that I made that comment. And I, then I talked about the AD co-curricular position that is coming up. So that's what it was. And then about the schedule, I thought we had a, a draft I thought we yep. were at a better place with that, so can you speak to the schedule just a little bit? Joanne, can you speak to where we are with the schedule? I can. Okay, Mary Ellen, go ahead. So Mary Ellen Simmons, who's our curriculum coordinator. Yep. We do have a schedule, and the schedule can work with pre-K through graduation. Uh, there still are some adjustments that need to be made to the schedule, but we are now in the process of taking that schedule and seeing how it fits in all three levels. So. We have asked every student to select uh, nine classes, and we are in the process of putting them together to see are there any conflicts, are there any pieces that need to be changed, are there other things on there. So that's where we are with the schedule. So are we looking Not at a yet. seven or eight period day, or what's the, it's going to be the seven, block structure? Seven or eight by period day, yes. Okay. This is, and this is frustrating because as a board we have been pushing for two months now that the community, the students, they need and want a schedule to make the decisions and get it put out there. There's three things that are in And we didn't have a, I get that we don't have start and end times with a busing schedule, but we could have at least put out first period you've got math, second period you've got PE, whatever it is. There's three things that are um, in uh, I don't know what you call it, in flux with the schedule. One of them is the teaching contract to see how much prep time there is. Another one is the start and end of time of day and lunch time. And I think there's another one. But there are other factors. But we do have the basic shell of a schedule. We do have a schedule for everybody that will work for all of the shared staff that are between two buildings, that are between elementary and middle, elementary and high school. <coughs> There's also chairs up here. And when do you think it will be available? Well, the, the, we have an all-day session tomorrow negotiating on the teacher's contract. We're hoping that it will be finished, but I guess I, we've also we've been meeting through the winter. Uh, we've just concluded probably four days of working to merge the language between the two contracts that 
uh, you know, that we can all agree on. And tomorrow we are scheduled to begin at noontime and go as long as it takes. Uh, this has been a long and protracted, frustrating, long period of time. And uh, everybody's interests are trying to be considered. And uh, so I'm hoping that there's some good news after tomorrow uh, on that front. We have, some, we have settled, and it's supposed to be ratified, the support staff contract. Uh, this is much more complicated than it normally is because we're talking about language from two different contracts merging into one. It's just taken a long time. So, so hopefully that'll be done soon. So when do we estimate that students will have schedules in hand and be able to say, I'm taking these AP classes and I need to read this book? Is that not until the teacher contract is complete? Is um, that what we're hearing? My understanding was, as of a week ago, that uh, they asked me to look at the, the schedule to see if, if this one can roll, and I said yes. Uh, what has happened since that happened, uh, I don't know. But I gave, gave my okay. I was a high school principal. I know what schedules are like. <coughs> I've built many schedules. So in the, in the case of, uh, you know, this, it went back to the guidance department. Hannah, are you here? Where are we? Hmm. Where are we? We're working on, we, prep time is a big stumbling block right now, I think. Not having that makes a big difference between are they teaching six classes or eight classes. Um, there are still a lot of holes into whether or not this is going to work and how it's going to work because what's been offered is you can teach a block or you can teach 45 minutes. So it's a little bit more complicated than just this is a block, this is 45 minutes. It could be either or. or. Mm -hmm. So it's figuring out what teacher assignments are, who wants 45 minutes, who wants a block. Does that impact students negatively in terms of what options they have? If we have a ton of 45 minute classes, then kids who want to take block, which is generally science, are going to have really limited options on the other side. So there's still a lot of questions. So I hear you saying you need the decision on the prep time. I need that. Okay. And I also, and I put this out there, and I don't know if you know, I'll get in trouble for it or not, but we have a schedule that both buildings have used. We, I don't feel like there's a definitive answer. This is awesome. This is great. I want to go with this. I want to keep it for five years. Can we take a pause, go with what we know, and spend real time when we're not doing all the other merger stuff to really focus on what would be best for our students in a schedule that we won't change again? Because they've had so many changes in schedules. I think the other part to that is we have to look at what structure is best in place for students learning. So there are, you know, other things out there that are considered in this. So it's not that black and white. I'm just really that's nervous that we're going to get to the end of the year and we're not going to have a schedule. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be really difficult for teachers, for students, for guidance. It's, it's going to be. And then starting having them walk in the door next year is it, it it's worrisome to me. And I, I think it's worrisome to us and the community <coughs> as well. And I truly care and I would truly put in extra <coughs> hours and do whatever's necessary. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I just I worry. Yeah. Um, Owen and then Bridget, and then I think we need to move to the, the student presentation. I'd like to address a few things, if I may. The model, the leadership model is very clear to me, so, and you'll see in the newsletter, I think we've been saying it all along. There's one school, two campuses. There's four principals. There will be two principals on each campus, primarily. At times, we'll need to support each other on each campus. David Wells was hired as an elementary principal, but that does not mean he would never help Reed McCracken on the high school level. Mm -hmm. I am a we are all licensed pre-K through 12 as principals. My experience has been primarily as a pre-K through 12 principal, like here in Bethel, as well as in Twinfield for 11 years, and I've done elementary principal. Andrew's been an elementary principal, an assistant principal. There is no vice principal. 
We, Sorry. That's I, a, it's an archaic it term, but that's fine. There's no reason you would know that. <laughs> but there's really just principle, and we're the same thing. We have the same license and endorsement. We're going to support each other. The charge is for Andra and David to make that those two elementary campuses work as one unit and have one set of systems. Mm -hmm. We see ourselves, because we are, a pre-K through 12 system, the whole system. We see ourselves as a united leadership team. We've been talking about it. We've been working on that. It's been very uncomfortable having to go through this with Joanne, who's done a great job, I agree. She wasn't chosen. And with Frank Romeo, who took himself out. We have some, two people that have been helping lead and are now out. People are looking like that's a surprise. My understanding is he did not want to be a principal in the school system. That's my understanding. So I also would say to you, as far as the schedule goes, the faculty came up with the schedule. I was there. Josh Pauley led the high school faculty. I was there through a, a process. Josh is a faculty member. Mm -hmm. This is very difficult to make a schedule. It's even more difficult when you're making a new school and people are bringing their own things to that. And we need to serve pre-K through 12 and we need to meet all those needs. We have done this. We've only been doing this since Rebecca Holcomb seated you. This is six months. The work we've accomplished is amazing. The grieving process is hard. This seems very hard for you. I don't see one Whitcomb student or faculty member here. I see it, I feel it for you. I'm empathizing with you. I truly am. I believe in what we're doing. I believe in public so you're education. you we don't? No, I'm saying I feel it with you. You're grieving for it, I can feel it. I truly do. I think what we're asking for are some just practical solutions here. We have a scheduling problem. And mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's I, not I don't think we need to talk yeah, philosophy. Let me just we're say, like wanting nuts and bolts. Say, the answer that beans. I was asked to give, I gave. Uh, and I haven't been asked anything since. So, um, if there are more questions, I'll be at the guidance office tomorrow morning and we'll try to work out all the details. We start negotiations at noon. So, um, when I was asked to, to give an opinion and, and to say, is this okay, I said okay, and we went forward. I, don't, I didn't know that there were still some conflicts, but we will work on them tomorrow. So, I mean, that's all I can tell you. I didn't know there were still conflicts until tonight. My last question for now, and then the kids can do their thing. Um, why was the decision made, and, and I hope it was a decision rather than just sort of sliding into some sort of inevitability, um, to go with a seven or eight period schedule again when the block scheduling is so important to the sciences, when it feels like every other school in Vermont is going to block scheduling and not understanding why, we're, why we were in a seven or eight period schedule two or three years ago? There were developed, there were nine schedules that were developed. It wasn't just one or two. Um, this was um, a recommendation that came to me. I know Mary Ellen was heavily involved uh, throughout the whole process, and uh, I can't tell you about the intricacies of every conversation. She probably can, because she was at the table with all of them. Uh, so I don't know whether you want to respond or not. Um, you know, I think we looked at many different options, and we did get a lot of input from faculty, like Owen is saying, and. Um, we're, you know, we're putting together the pieces. I think several weeks ago we had started the process. We had the schedule all ready to go, but then the scheduling company had some things. We have all of the students signed up for nine classes, so they all have their classes. But it's they just don't know which of those classes they're they, they know pretty much. They just yeah. don't know is it the first period or the last period that they're having that class. But, but you're but, saying a seven or eight period class, you guys would be signed up for nine classes. I, I think it's important. So if there's a conflict, they can put one of the one of the other ones in there. So you always have that at least seven. But that still doesn't mean that they know what classes yeah. they're taking, what's in their schedule. What they may it's have not finished yet. Yeah, it's not finished yet. But it's, we're it's starting a, that process. It's so important have, to say that I've been here four years, and every single year, the schedule has been in question. Yeah. People are upset about it. Some some don't like it. Some do like it. 
and it's kind of bobbed and weaved all over the place uh, according to uh, whatever. But, but it's still going on, and we've got to get it right. Um, this is really the first time I've ever been asked to be to do anything with it, uh, but I know that the controversy's been there. So, and it's pretty complicated, especially in a small school. Uh, schedule designed in 45 minute blocks, which could be 90 minute blocks. You can have a block schedule, or you can have a not block schedule. Yeah, hybrid. hybrid. That's what you have there. It can work both ways. And this is what the teachers asked for. All right, Christine. Sorry, just I just I remember when we sat in South Burlington two I don't know a few months ago, and we were told May first there'll be a schedule. We will know our classes May first. So now again, I'm just asking because kids sign up for classes now. If kids want, to, you know, they need to know what they need for graduation. Mm -hmm. When will we have a schedule, and when will we know what, what classes our kids are taking? Well, I promise I'll go to the guidance office tomorrow, and we'll see what we can work out. Are I'm you going to be there? An AP exam well, so you'll be on your own. Yeah, I'll yeah, go to the guidance, all guidance all office and wander around. Yeah. Okay. I would be available at noon for and any power meetings. All right. Deadline for one. Uh, say a deadline of June first to get the schedule ready or something. I think June. Uh, I hope sooner than no, June first. <laughs> Gotta have oh, right. some time when we have it ready. <clears throat> anyway. When do schedules typically get handed to students in before Royalton? April vacation. Before April. Yeah. Okay. All right. The There's no typical. This is not a typical year. Oh, sorry. Right. And I'm, I'm speaking for South so Right. Sorry. I don't know what what comes. Okay. Deadlines are, but that's what we've operated on in the past. I right. I get that. I just wanted to know what the community probably expected closer to that than this. I just want to make sure that my senior isn't right. going to find out in September that she doesn't have the credits or the caseload right. that she needs because if that happens. Not going to be a happy mama. Right. Just saying. So, is it possible to start with the seniors and work backwards in terms of schedules? Because it seems like the freshmen have four years to get what they need. It's it's not quite that simple because you're looking at you really look at freshmen and seniors in the sense okay. that you want to be able to get some of those graduation requirements over with in the first couple of years so that they have options in their junior and senior year if they're not if they're doing that kind of flexible pathways or doing anything outside of the building so or vocational any right. of those things so it's not quite as simple as saying seniors we're just going to focus on the seniors but certainly <coughs> we do focus on both freshmen and seniors when we talk about priorities and who really needs what mm -hmm. Should we go? I, I hate to bounce around so much, but I feel like we need to go to the nature's classroom. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Is yes. nature's classroom first? Yes. Well, okay. That's the plan. Um, sorry. We just were talking um, from an These kids are here. Can we right. let them present okay, and then go. we can do our we nature's classroom after? Yeah. 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 These kids have been so quiet. Yeah. Yeah. They've been great. And So we didn't know that it would be such a well-attended meeting, and we have a picture display here for you. <laughs> 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 Can you just clarify for the greater audience what the name of this presentation could be possibly summarized as? Mm -hmm. Or as no. a so, no. Because I'm not seeing it listed no. in the agenda. Right. So, so, no. 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 Hi, um, my name is Amelia Lincoln. I'm the student assistance professional here at uh, Bethel Whitcomb, and this is I'm Laurie Smith. I'm the elementary health teacher here in Bethel. 
And uh, these wonderful ladies have volunteered to uh, present to you a project they have been doing, um, VCAT. They've been doing VCAT stuff all year. And Aaliyah is going to tell you what VCAT is. Hi, I'm Aaliyah, and I'm a sixth grader from Bethel Elementary. And VCAT, it stands for Vermont Kids Against Tobacco, which is a group of fifth and sixth graders at our school that have been trying to prevent tobacco use in Vermont. Hi, I am Paisley. I am a sixth grader at Bethel Elementary School. This year, VCAT students had lunch and afternoon meetings to learn about the dangers of e-cigarettes and about big tobacco marketing for kids. In March, for Kick Butts Day, two groups of students went into first and second grade classes to teach about tobacco, how tobacco affects the body. Other groups of students worked on letter urging state government to increase the smoking age 21. Students also signed a banner pledging to be part of the first tobacco-free generation. We also did a photo voice project photo project called Photo Voice. Hello, my name is Lily and I'm also in sixth grade and we have been preparing <laughs> all year to create this giant presentation called Fo Photo Voice, which is basically telling the story of our town, Bethel, through pictures. And we w walked around town taking pictures of just different things we saw, like Amelia's dog, True, which <laughs> this one happens to be Rainbow, the, the town hall, and different tobacco marketing things and cigarette butts. And we have been, like, just trying to put this together to um, prevent tobacco use. Yes. Mackenzie? Hi, my name is Mackenzie. I'm also a sixth grader here. After we took pictures, photos, we chose pictures and wrote about them, explaining what the picture showed, why the situation ex exists, and if we could do anything about it. Yesterday we picked up cigarette butts and sit litter and, and got this many cigarette butts between the school and the band show in town. Wow. So given the crowded room, it's yeah. probably not realistic for people to actually get to walk up to the display, but we can leave it here for people to look at when the meeting ends. Um, yeah, the kids did an amazing job. Do you guys have any questions about the project the kids did, or any questions? Is the display anywhere in the school where we can see it? It's been in, in the school, Already. but we need to um, take it down because we need to give the display board back to the art teacher who graciously <laughs> let us use it. Yes, Bridget. Um, you guys are going to be, many of you are going to be in the middle school, and so you're going to be co students with a lot of South Royalton kids. Um, I don't know, there should be a place in the school for this at South Royalton. I would love to have you guys bring it down here. So, you know, just sort of introducing, hey, here are some of your future classmates. Here's a cool thing they did. By the way, tobacco is terrible. Um, I think it would be great. And thank you guys for, again, waiting here so patiently. I, if I didn't know you were there, I wouldn't have known you were there. Um, and this is a great project. Mm -hmm. Good job. Uh, yeah. Any other questions or comments? You, you talked about e-cigarettes, and I know I think that's a really important. I mean, yes. something to be more aware of. Do you have? Did you find any signs of e-cigarettes in your? We found this one here. There's oh. lots of flavors. Oh. 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 Oh.
flavors, which is, which makes people want to buy it. Yes, and it happens to be right next to the M and M candies <laughs> at, at eye level for kids, and so like they see the M and M's, and then they see right next to it e-cigarettes that are different flavors, and and they might think. Wow, I might give this a try. This is cool flavors. Why not? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, these guys did it, um, ads, um, like the Skittles flavor, you know, different things like that. And they're like, wait, this is like, and, and understanding that it's marketed towards kids and no, those are not healthy things to do. The kids aren't um, allowed to, I mean, I, this is going to show my ignorance. The kids aren't allowed to buy that. Just like, don't you have to be 18 to purchase You do, cigarettes? you do. Yeah. But, but, they, but they, still, they put it next to the candy yeah, so that it it's, makes it's you... It's trying to make that association so when the kids are old enough to buy it, they'll buy it. It would be wonderful flavors. to try to work on legislation to, to prevent those things from being displayed next Absolutely. to, you know... Wouldn't yeah. that be a cool project for like middle schoolers to uh, yeah, tackle there's next year? Organization Counterbalance Vermont, and they talk about exactly that. Um, you know, if you go into the gas station where there's the great uh, flavored cigarello for 99 cents, um, and kids get it, definitely get a hold of them. They feel like e-cigarettes are not that, depending on the age and the education they've gotten, feel like they aren't that bad. But if they're in Skittle flavor, or Sour Patch right. flavor, that's exactly you know. Mm. Who they're looking for? Yes. Your next project should be energy drinks mm. and how bad <laughs> those are. Right. Thanks for the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Scores were really great because uh, Lori and I a little, were a little nervous about approaching them, and they were really fantastic. The kids went in, took pictures, and um, um, yeah. And we also did a survey. They did a survey um, of Bethel and what um, people loved about Bethel, hopes, concerns. Um, and they wrote little poems about some of their pictures. So. I also want to point out on one of our pictures for the ads, it it even has a warning, which I think they should make much bigger. It says, warning, this product can cause gum disease and tooth loss. Mm -hmm. And so, like, why would you risk it? <laughs> like, it's not even... To, to piggyback off that, there's actually a, a, a bunch of research that shows that the more that children go into convenience stores, the more likely they are to use tobacco products. And that's all because of how heavily marketed all the tobacco products are in stores. So what these guys did to draw attention to it can have a huge impact on kids walking into a convenience store and saying, that's a trick or I think that's gross or, or whatever. So it's a really important issue to draw attention to because not even realizing it, kids are getting exposed to this message every time they walk into one of the stores in our community, really. Thank you very much. Thank you for your Thank time. You. Thank you. That's the dress. <laughs> I was trying to have the under the radar. And how do you feel about it? Do you want these cigarettes? Where? I'm just not in this. I'm just not exposed to this. If you walk into a public restaurant and it smells like something from years ago, with an undertone terrible, we're being exposed to nicotine, aren't we? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
My name is Hope Yeager. I'm a South Royalty teacher in grades four and five. And Monica Farrington, South Royalty teacher in grades four and five. And Rebecca Forrest was here. Um, uh, she's a Bethel teacher, uh, teaches grades five and six right now, but she had to leave. So, uh, and David is here. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Um, do you want me? You're good? Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, roughly February, we came up uh, with this idea of bringing Bethel fifth graders and South Royalton fifth graders together, um, knowing that they were going to sixth grade together next year. Uh, and we brought them to Nature's Classroom. And Nature's Classroom is all over, but the one that we chose was in Ocean Park, Maine. And the dates we went uh, was right uh, shortly after April vacation. Um, so just to give you an idea, this is how awesome it is. Um, <laughs> this is our beach, um, and it was a seven minute walk from where we stayed. Um, our kids got to go to the ocean multiple times a day. Okay, uh, so I just thought what I would do is show you a little bit about what it looked like um, when we were there. So every day, we were there for five days, and every day the kids had multiple transition times, um, of which could be like recess, or we had also uh, set aside some quiet reflection time during the day, and they had about five of those each day, and they came after meals and then ranged each, and in between activities, and they ranged between a half an hour and 45 minutes. While we were there, each child um, uh, was put into a field group, which they stayed with their field group leader or teacher for the, for the whole week that they were there. And those field groups uh, were mixed. So those were Bethel kids and South Royalton kids. Um, and that was every morning they met for about two hours. Uh, and then in the afternoon, they had choices of different classes that they could take. Those classes were also mixed, um, Bethel and South Royalton kiddos. And the one in the center is a geodome that the kids built. Um, off to the left is kids getting ready to, to uh, go into their class. And then on the right um, is a wilderness survival class. And that was about, we learned how to make a fire when you didn't really have a whole lot of anything. So it was pretty cool. And every night uh, we had an evening activity and this was the last night. I was not there for the last night. So this one, um, we split the week. I was there the second half of the week um, with David and Alicia and Hope for the first half. So this was called Thursday Night Live. And kind of like Saturday Night Live, but it was on Thursday. Um, and the kids with their field groups, they kind of put on different performances. And it was just great to see the kids up there on the stage. And um, again, our tables were mixed for meals. So we had South Royalton kiddos mixed with Bethel kiddos and Bethel staff and South Royalton staff uh, kind of all mixed together. Um, and uh, so the meals were served family style and it just was pretty um, special to watch. Um, every meal started off with a positive share. Um, and then they had waitrons, so it's kids signed up. Um, each child, I think three meals for the week, was responsible for gathering the food and bringing it to the table. Um, that way they didn't have too many people up at one time. And then there was all kinds of fun stuff that happened at meals. Um, we kept track of ORT, which is how much food was wasted, and we tried to, we graphed that, and then every meal concluded with a lesson related to nutrition or food. Um, and yeah, so that was that. And the food was ridiculously good. And the last day, I'll let Monica talk about that. Um, so this is a picture right before we got on the bus. It is both Bethel and South Burlington, as well as all the nature's classroom staff. Um, we just wanted to get a picture with all of them. And Rebecca had asked me just to share that she felt like, because Rebecca was there, as was um, Veronica from Bethel, they were there for the full five days and um, Rebecca had asked me to share that she really felt like the group kind of came together um, really on Wednesday and she felt like you know it was kind of separate 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 and then sort of really brought together so on Wednesday so she really felt like that five days was really important to have that amount of time for these kids really to be in that kind of environment to really start to feel comfortable and become friends um, 
with each other. And yeah, so the hope obviously would be that this would be in the budget and this would happen every year. Um, and I'm just gonna say it now because we, <laughs> we had about 30 kids between Bethel and South Royalton this year and next year we have over 60 in fifth grade. So just give you an idea how much things fluctuate from year to year in small schools. Um, but in thinking about that, that's definitely something that you know we've talked about and we have had a little chance to debrief and would really like this um, to continue for these kids. <coughs> did, uh, did you get a lot of personal feedback from the kids about how they felt? In, in you know. So when we got back on Monday, I could hear when I was coming into school, the kids are out on the playground at morning recess, and I could hear they're calling each other waitrons, and you could see just that <laughs> kind of... What? So waitron is someone that, it's like a waitress and a, a waiter, but they kind of put the two together, so it's gender neutral. Um, <laughs> so the kids were like, you waitron, go get, like, push me on the swing or something. So it was just kind of fun to hear coming back on Monday here and the kids talk about it. They, and just to follow up to answer the same question. So uh, it's come up a couple of times in my homeroom. So the ORT report in terms of how much food was wasted, there's a little song that went with it. And so one day one of the kids started singing the ORT report song and then another kid said, hey, we should bring the ORT report to South Royalton and we should look into that and how much food do we waste? And so it sort of popped up as um, the time has gone by since we've come back. Um, and different kids will say different times, like, oh, I miss being there. It's like, yeah, I miss being there, too. That was cool. So it's sort of, yeah, and I just some pieces. I just feel like I have to add one more thing, if that's okay. Dave, do you want to go? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Well, and Frank wanted <laughs> well, to Frank wants to say yeah. something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wanted to just say that Frank was there, but he didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say that I was there for the first three days um, and when they came back on Monday the kids that were there came over to me and said Mr. Romeo you missed this and I can't believe you missed that and this is what we did um, I'm gonna say right now find the money find the money it's worth it's worth it I saw kids interact and do things um, that I have not seen them smile um, and be leaders and for some kids that uh, may not even get outside the house this summer that might be the only experience find the money it was We've incredible and I will just say We've got a plan. good go for it okay. Dave and I'd like to say there was definitely not every kid enjoyed it but it was because it was a challenge and it was the first time they were away from home so that part to me was the most important part that they had the experience being away from home when I got there on Wednesday, there was a few boys, quite a bit of them, that were homesick. Okay. And I talked to them, you know, talked to them about it. And, you know, I was in that boat when I was a fourth grader in a basketball camp. And uh, I remember getting on the payphone. They didn't really know what a payphone was. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, a lot of these kids, once they persevered, and I told them, hey, you'll always be able to look at what you did and know that you've persevered even though it was tough times. And Overall, the kids loved it. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there were some kids. I just asked a, a kid today in Bethel, and she was like, I was like, did you miss it? She's like, no. <laughs> I'm glad she was back, but it was a great opportunity. And I would echo what Frank said. It's definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. And I would just say that for my homeroom, um, you know, if you've ever had a fifth grader, um, the, you know, they it's a hard time. It's a hard time in their lives. And so... A lot of them can be kind of down or just you know up and down and um, so one of the things that nature's classroom does is it sets up this very supportive positive environment where everybody feels where people feel safe where they can take risks and principal ox if, you've never, if you haven't had the chance to meet him everybody should meet principal ox and every teacher should work for a principal ox. he would and his whole thing was <laughs> His whole quote was basically, above all else, be good to one another. And we were having a little bit of a to-do in my class the other day, and one of my fifth graders stood up and he said, remember what Principal Ox said, above all else, be good to one another. And if, I'm sorry, if that doesn't, I, that just, to me, sealed the deal right there. And, yeah. so. Oh, when you say, so was it... South, all fifth graders, so Rowan Bethel? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's no, 
no one will be there. There were a couple kids that didn't go. There are a few, few kids three, three. who chose not to go. Chose not to yeah. go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So families nice chose. Choice. Okay. Is it so it doesn't cost anything for the families? It's we did not charge the families. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> Were there pay phones or cellular phones? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so one of the things is uh, the kids don't bring any devices. No devices. None. They were encouraged so. to write home on a piece of paper, which actually was a good lesson in itself, addressing an envelope. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what if someone really wanted to come home? Would you have that? We like, would make that. We would make that phone call. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I think it was a great location too because a lot of these kids don't have an opportunity to go to the ocean, so it was like a first-time thing for that. Also, the kids that were really homesick, I think if it was closer, they would have been calling home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 They were Sickness would sort of, you know, come on at bedtime. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, let's see how you are in the morning. And then, you know, then next morning, like, let's go to breakfast. Yeah. You know, ready to go. Is this the same location it's going to be every year? Or is that? I hope so. I hope so. The staff there was so solid. One year at a time. One year at a time. Anyway, that was our Thank you for taking the time away from your families to take the students yeah. up there. We really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Are we back to, back to our agenda? Um, so we're just to our consent agenda, um, approving the minutes, which are in the packet. Um, we have three sets. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, minutes from those three days. I'll second. Yeah. Okay. All, in favor, all in favor of approving the minutes as one consent agenda, um, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Are there any board comments? Yeah, I just want to make a comment. Um, I, th I think I uh, you listen to what the students and, and the teachers say. I think we need to prioritize what needs to be done first to get ready for next fall. And if the schedule is the top of priority, then it needs to get done. And I don't know if that is the top thing on the priority, but I guess we need to decide that. And attack it. Yeah, is, the, is the exam, is the AP exam that Hannah's proctoring tomorrow, is that the AP exam or is it just? We proctor seven a, exams and two late exams. So but, I, but is a, it like the official AP weeks. exam or is, yes, yeah. it's so, so nobody else can know. <laughs> so. so I won't be bothering them. <laughs> right. Chris was right. trying to find someone else who <laughs> could <laughs> sit in your yeah. place. <laughs> so yeah, that's not a big right. because I would love to put somebody <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, but it's these guys tomorrow, so not really. I want to be there for them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else? All right, superintendent's report is next. Several things for you. I have three resignation letters that I'm going to pass around to you. Cass Bath is one of them. Uh, Kate George is another one of them. And Christine Fitch from here at Bethel is another one. So there are rumors of others, but I don't know. Uh, I think we'll probably know who's coming back and who's not now. And uh, also I'll send those around. Uh, the other thing is I have three documents uh, for us signing up for VHI next year. Uh -huh. one, the, one is the medical benefits part of VHI, the other is the dental benefits part of VHI, and the other is the unemployment part of VHI, compensation part of VHI. So I am going to need signatures on these if you wish to be a part of it. I uh, hope you, I mean we have in the past. and. I guess I'm suggesting we will in the future, but um, those need to be executed at some point, so I'll pass them your way. 
Um, again, I introduce both uh, David and Reed. Um, we have a policy meeting tomorrow night, um, and hopefully that'll be the last policy meeting we will be having for the first time ever. Uh, the, the most important policies that uh, the mandatory policies that the state uh, wants us to have uh, and with Act 46 it was important that those policies be developed before July 1st when this board takes uh, you know takes on exactly what you're going to be doing with leading this group so uh, that that's been Steve Dale is 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 leading that I'm kind of excited about uh, the fact that uh, the, the process uh, is going to end with the most important ones and then continue in the fall with all the optional policies that we have to look at. This is not easy work, it's not exciting work, but it's necessary work for boards. So I'm, I'm glad we're doing that now. I uh, don't have much else, I don't think, at this point for you. I guess I'd entertain any questions from you. We're really We've got one more budget to pass uh, with uh, Rochester and Stockbridge next week. We got uh, Chelsea and Tunbridge last night. So, um, and the uh, as I said before, the negotiations continue. I'm hoping that we will have something concluded tomorrow. If not, we have a, another date on the 24th. Hopefully, we won't have to use it. We are really down to very few things. So, and Dave has been there for all of it, so I thank him for his time. Mm -hmm. Where do we stand on the teacher's health insurance? Uh, we have accounts developed with DataPath, um, and my understanding, David, do you have the latest, where are you? Da do you have the latest on DataPath and where we are with them? I, I'm unable to say that the money is flowing yet, but we're getting there. We're getting there real close. There, there's more forms and more forms and more forms, and we're getting them in right away. Uh, same day or the next day, we're getting them in, and we are uh, hoping to be operational and the money flowing again within a very short period of time. But I kind of I cannot put a date on this. Okay. That's it for me. Okay. Unless you have any questions. <coughs> nope. I think we're set. Um, so that brings us to a financial update. My name is David Larkham. I'm the business manager. Good evening, everybody. I have a number of copies of two documents, and that's what's going to be shown up here. So if you don't have a copy in your hand, you'll be able to see it on the screen here. First of all, we're going to look at the Royalton financial report as of the end of April. Uh, it's good practice uh, in accounting-wise to look at the end of an accounting period, so end of April rather than today's date, so that we can compare this year to next year and last year and every year on the same date of the year. And so what I have here is a report of what's in our accounting software. The first column, column A, is just a, a break, in, but B is the description of the kind of activity, which in the accounting world in Vermont is called a function. What function are we performing? We're in, in, performing instruction, general instruction, art instruction, PE instruction, <coughs> music instruction, all the way down. The next column, C, is the amount that was budgeted by the voters um, for different areas. The encumbered column says that we have a, a uh, written document that says that we are obligated for something. We have a contract, we have a purchase order, something like that. The expended amount is the amount that has actually been had checks cut and gone out the door. Um, so those, those uh, columns A, B, C, D, and E are all firm numbers. They're in our accounting system. They are not subject to uh, in interpretation or speculation. The next column, the business manager, is my opinion, my professional opinion as a business manager. What do I think will happen between now and the end of the year? It's a projection. And so if I add column C, D, E, and my projection, I come to column H, which is the projected column. And then the column after that is the variance, the difference between what's projected and what was budgeted. So if you go down column I, you'll see all the, vari the variances. Some, some of the rows have large amounts. Most of them have very small amounts because our budget is pretty close to what's actually happening. But there are some areas where there are significant variances. In column J, for those that are familiar with some of the 
some of the intricate uh, codes that go into uh, the financial accounting in Vermont. Those represent the kind of uh, objects or the kind of things that are being purchased in that general area. So for example, in, in instruction general in row six, if you go across to the right hand side, the budget manager comments uh, 5115, which speaks about uh, salaries for support staff. 5220 talks about FICA costs. Uh, and so on. For each of those codes, there's, there's something very specific that's meant by it. And each of them relates to the formula in here. So you can, if you look up where it says F6 and go across, you see there's a formula in there, and that shows where the 5115 piece comes from and where the 5220. So it's very detailed drilling down to look at what's actually happening. Some areas have very clear answers, and some uh, need more work. Um, so, for example, if you look at row six and go all the way across to column I, the variance is $106,000. That's a lot of variance. I drilled down to uh, just below the knee level and identified which teachers were being paid in that account and which teachers were budgeted in that account, and there was a reasonably close uh, correlation between the two. So it means, it means I need to go down to the ankle to get to the detail, and I'll be speaking with our principals from, from Bethel to get down to that. Um, not the royalty financial. Oh, not you, you, you know the, don't know the answer to that one? No. Oh, <laughs> oh and I, I thought you knew all the answers. <laughs> so anyway, so we're starting with royalty, and, and I, will, I won't go through every line. Nobody's interested in every line, I don't think. We can come back to any line that you're interested in. And I'll jump to the bottom. You will see that there are some uh, labels in column A and B which have is designed as yellow, but it comes out as kind of a ochre kind of a color. Those, well, one of them, like school-wide, represents a, a grade level or a, a range of grade levels. So previously, we had pre-K and elementary, pre-K, elementary, middle school, secondary, and then we came down to school-wide, all, all the grades together. But in addition to that, there are these um, in row 42, 45, 50, and so on. All those shaded in yellow are, are represented functions that are performed by the supervisory unit on behalf of the member districts for which an assessment is charged. Some people in the past have seen a very large amount of money being charged to the central office. That sort of history has passed now. Now we're looking more closely at what it is we're actually getting from the central office. So we're getting some special education services. We're getting some improvement of instruction, curriculum work. Um, the representative of that is sitting at the head table here. Um, Office of the superintendent also sitting at the head table. Fiscal, the, the guy who's trying to uh, keep us moving here. Grants administration, technology administration, all these kind of services are performed at the central office and the cost is shared amongst the member districts. And for example, in grants administration, uh, Royalton pays on an annual basis $6,608 for the, for the benefit of receiving that grants administration. It's a great deal, great deal for, for, for um, Royalton. They couldn't afford to get a grants administration function for less than that if it was done locally. Transportation and so on, it goes down. And now jump right to the very bottom. <coughs> Not quite as far as that. Here. So the bottom line is our total budget is just under $6 million for Royalton. We have encumbered about almost $800,000 in column D at the bottom there. You see on row 64 going across. We have actually cut checks for $4.1 million. My project for the projection for the rest of the year for all those different functional areas in the budget is just about $600,000. So I'm projecting that we will come out at the end of the year with about $5.5 million. Now, there's a caution at the very bottom in row 67. Um, and it's, it's very important that you don't start imagining how you're going to spend all this money, especially with those wonderful field trips that have just been presented to us. It's very easy to imagine what else we could spend it on for next year. But there's a caution here, which is to say that in the normal cycle of financial management of, of school systems, at the end of the year, there are a lot of things that get billed back to schools. I'll give you one, one example. During the course of the year, we have uh, employees that are identified as special education employees who are deployed in the various schools within our supervisory union. And at the beginning of the year, it is uh, conceived that they will work 100%, 90%, 70%, 60%, whatever it is, in doing special education work. 
and the remainder will be regular general education work. Thank you. One of the management tools that the Agency of Education at the state level requires of us is that we monitor the time that's actually spent on special education. And so there are two times during the year when time studies are done to just ensure that people who are being charged to special education are actually doing special education work. Uh, what comes out of those two time studies is that this person who you thought was going to be doing 80% special education is actually doing 50% or is actually doing 100%. It can go in either direction. But if it goes down, and it often happens in that direction, that a, especially a paraeducator is suddenly what, no longer providing support for special education services, but is used for support in playground management or in bus monitoring or loading the kids on off the bus, recess duty, all those kind of things. All, that, all those expenses have to be taken out of their special education expenditures and charged back to the schools that has reassigned them out of special education. And so that all happens at the end of the year. So right in Royalton, we're seeing a variance at the end of the year. You might say a profit, of, of, or at least expenditures are 320,000 less than was budgeted. But a significant amount of that is going to be eaten up with these billbacks that happen at the end of the year when all these time studies and other things like that are calculated and the amounts charged back to the districts. So that's, that's true for each of the districts that's here. So there, when you get to Bethel, you'll see there's an even larger number than that, 300,000. And you may say, whoa, we're going to have a party. But be careful. It's a caution, word of caution. They're the year-end activities that need to happen financially that will certainly eat away at some of that. Um, hopefully, there'll still be a surplus at the end. I'm expecting that there will be. But it's not, it's not likely to be as big as it's showing up there. So it's good news for now, but we want to hold on for the rest of the story to, to work its way out. There's a, a, no, a natural cycle in education finance, and at the end of the year, there are various things that get built back. The other, the other caution that I, that I mentioned with this is we're only looking at the expenditures. So we may be 300000 at this stage, $300,000 less in expenditures, but if we're $500,000 less in revenue, we're in trouble. I think you can see that. So it's important to look at the revenue and expenditures together. At this stage, we haven't had a chance to do that. It's a very time-consuming work to, to do this kind of thing, and we will get to that. But at this stage, we, this is what we have, and that's what I'm sharing with you today. So that you can see what it is that we, what is budgeted, what's committed, um, what I expect that we will have projected by the end of the year, and, and that's, the, that's the amount, and that's the variance, the difference that our expenditures are at this stage are looking like they could be something like $300,000 less than we budgeted, with the caution that there's some year-end billbacks that need to happen. In the ideal world, there would be plenty of time, and everybody would have the resources and opportunity for the business manager and the principals to sit down before coming to the board into a public meeting like this and for us to share notes and to share opinions and expertise and perspective. Didn't happen. I apologize for that. Um, I'm, I'm running at about 100 miles an hour, and as I, I know our principals are, and we will get to that, but it, it didn't happen today. So this is what we have today. So these numbers here are firm. This is, is a softer number. It's not a number which I made up. It's not a guess. I drill down in each of the major areas. <coughs> I look carefully at who was being charged where and what kind of expenses to see how many months of certain kinds of services were included in a particular area. I looked at, for example, at tuition to see, do we have tuition for the whole year or do we have it just for 10 months? Those kind of details are all represented here. I looked at the, the assessments, and most of the assessments have been paid in full in Royalton. Not true in all the districts, but it's true in Royalton, except for the transportation assessment. So there's still an amount here that I'm projecting that we will, in fact, end up the year paying another 31000 on top of the 115 that we've already spent. So we will end up paying the full assessment for transportation. The buses keep moving every day. Our kids keep coming to school and going home each day. And that's an expense that we have to pay. So I'm expecting that that will, in fact, happen by the end of the year. Um, so this is a 40,000-foot view of where we stand financially. I think it's generally positive. Andrew, did you have a question? 
Or just uh, with a lot of these buildbacks, I mean, did you put things in the business manager column for those things that you're anticipating? I haven't calculated them yet, no. They're not in there. The, the full payment of assessments is in there, as you can see. I did include the, the full amount of the transportation assessment in there. So things that were easy to identify, I put them in. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you get as much of a picture as possible. But the buildback is a much more complicated thing. So it means, for example, uh, running a separate payroll to calculate what going from 80% sure. to 72% means in terms of salary and benefits and all those kind of things. It's a, it's a, it's a task, and it takes time, and it will be done. Sure. Uh, Sorry. So I, talk, I talked about Elizabeth Savage uh, this past week uh, because on on our agenda, I'm trying to make sure that we're doing the right things, closing out South Worldson. Uh -huh. And I don't know if anyone else has gotten that email. Uh, it went to most of the business managers. I can forward it to you if you want it. But I read it before I left tonight, and it sounds like as of July 1, our district ends that day. There's no checks written off after July 1. <coughs> they have to re like rehire everybody right then and there. It's very specific what ha has to happen. And I'm concerned if we don't have the budget, you know, budget, like it should be pretty firm on July 1 because mm -hmm. my understanding is you cannot write a check off of, off of the Royalton budget that day. So I don't know who's responsible to make sure that this stuff happens, but like all all employees have to be hired in public session, like they have to be, it's pretty specific. So I'll email that to you. I'm sure Bruce, your office probably already has it. David and I talked about this today, and David, will you explain what the procedure will be for that date? I, I didn't see that email yet. I was searching emails until five minutes before, before I came. But I was, I was talking today with the Tunbridge tri uh, town treasurer, who's also the district treasurer for one of the new unified districts, and we were talking about this very topic. And the, the conclusion that we came to was that based on our understanding of the agreement, the merger agreement, all assets and liabilities of the merging districts become the assets and liabilities of the merged district. Unless unless it was made for specific purposes for that town. For instance, scholarships that may be a graduate, you know, a resident of South Wales. I'm sure Bethel has the same. But they told me it's all what's w written in our Articles of Agreement. I, the I, the I, issue which really that is, is that, that there is are going to be bills that are coming in after right. June 30th, and we've got to pay those bills. And we don't, you know, we've got to be able to come up with the money to be able to do it. So I, I that has to that. be clarified. Right, I have, the, the letter that I have was supposedly sent to all business managers. Huh. So somewhere in the office they should have that. So I think there are two different yeah. issues here. One is what happens to the utility bill that, that is for the period ending on June 30th, it arrives on July 15th. I think the answer to that is that it gets paid by the White River Unified District. Right. Out of the White River Unified District checking account. So in the fiscal year, fiscal 18 for Royalton and for Bethel separately, they, they, they may well have only 11 months of utilities expenditures. And so any, any, any amount of money that's in the bank account on, at the end of June 30th for the, the, the districts that are going out of business that, at midnight will be transferred over to the unified districts so that that June utility bill which comes in July will be paid in July with that money which is coming across. So that's our understanding. But I, I really, honestly, I don't, I don't feel that's my responsibility. I'm just saying that I just want to make sure that, it, right. you know, come that time, it, it transitions. So I'm answering right your question and saying there's a process in place that's well understood. Yeah. Now, the other thing that you raised is a, is a different topic, and that's also a very important topic, but it's really not anything to do with merging. It's getting confused in the merger emotion, but it's not caught up with mer merging. So. Three years down the road, when the White River Unified District has been operating for three years, and somebody comes along and says, I want to donate $5,000 to send the fifth grade kids off to Maine, to the beach. Hmm. There's a restriction on a donation, which has got nothing to do with the town of origin, but it's to do with the purpose for which it was given. And so scholarships that, that were given for the purpose of these students will remain the students, whether it's merging or not merging. It's irrelevant about the merging. 
So, and the same would be true of, for example, I believe for reserve funds for maintenance of buildings. So if there is money that is being set aside by a board to maintain this building, whether it's in the same district or a merged district or whatever it is, it's, it's irrelevant because the purpose, the dedicated purpose of that money would need to be honored going forward. New money coming in is, is different. The, and the other thing that's a little bit different is that in the past, it was the Bethel board that would decide on the reserve fund in Bethel for the maintenance of the Bethel building and royalties and likewise. In future, it will be the new unified board that will decide, but the same restrictions will go with the money. So those restrictions are not gonna be lost. So anybody who's concerned about money that was given for a specific purpose, whether it's the grant, a grant from the local gas station or a scholarship from a family member that died in the community, those restrictions all stay with the money, whether it's an emerge district or an existing district, that, that doesn't change. So people don't need to be worried about that and the board will take, make sure that those, those intentions are, are honored. Were you gonna show us Bethel? Yes. Yeah, I feel like with the Bethel part, we maybe don't need to go in. You did a wonderful job of describing the last one. I think that... When we go to the, the bottom line. Yes, yeah, the, bottom the bottom line, line. that's exactly it. I was trying to articulate that, and that's what I'm looking for. Thank you. You don't wanna spend the whole night on numbers? Oh, come on. <laughs> It's our favorite thing, really, but we don't want to keep everybody here. It's a better, it's an easier language than words. It's more yeah. definitive. Yeah. There's not a great artist. It's understandable. There's no inflection in your voice to change the meaning of the words. Yeah. Ten is ten. Yeah. <clears throat> so the bottom line here is six hundred thousand dollars. Wow. You can clap if you like. I didn't do it. <laughs> that one I know. That one you know. So again, there's a word of caution here. Yep. Don't take it to the bank. Don't plan all your field trips based on the number that you see there. There's still mm -hmm. billbacks and, and things that need to happen. But I did, did drill down to the knees here in Bethel as well. Good, thank you. Um, so that's, that's where things stand at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. The things like you said, like the library and whatever, like you had on the. So they're all up there, and they're in the, in the handout. This is all just royalty mm -hmm. here. Thank you. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You, Thanks, David. Thank you. Okay. Sure. 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 Um, so we are back to public comment or discussion items at this point. <laughs> discussion items. Do we have? There's nothing under them on the agenda, so I feel like that brings us back to public. Can comment. I just ask you a quick question? It's a pretty simple question. Okay. So, can you just clarify for me? Everybody had to go through, uh, like, reapply for their jobs. Thank you. Uh, like, how? How did? Like, how did that? Like, the teach? Did the teachers have to reapply for their jobs? Uh, not necessarily. Okay. There were no, there were no, we didn't do any layoffs, basically, okay. of professional staff. We okay. had enough positions for everyone, okay. pretty much. And how about the administration? Uh, not a, not an application, so to speak. We, um, I, I do the evaluations on all the administrators, and therefore I made a recommendation to the board. Okay. And that's how that happened. And when when did that happen? The evaluations have to be done by February first. So, so they, and by by law and and basically, uh, I had to talk to the board at that time about whether or not the ones that were coming back were coming back. Okay. So when did they when did the administration know that they had their jobs? Um, well, they received a copy of their evaluations, and there in was a, February. Yes, but well, actually January. 
I, I did the evaluation. This is something that the legislature did last year. Right. Normally, we would be evaluated in March or April, mm -hmm. but they wanted uh, this done earlier because they wanted these people, if they weren't going to be here, to be able to find jobs. Right. So they went to the legislature, and uh, the VPA approached the legislature last year and said, we want you to move that date back to uh, January, which means I had to do the evaluations in December. So we know then, like, does Bethel have a guidance counselor? No. Yeah. They have two guidance counselors. counselors. Okay, so, so they know that they have their job, and we know that, that we have Hannah again. Correct, and you have Jenny Lane. Right, so we're secure, and we know that they have their jobs, and they're coming back in August. Yes. Okay. Are they administrative? Yeah. They're not. I mean, they're guidance. not necessarily administrators. They're no, we'll, but we'll have all four of those guidance counselors where they're going to be exactly and you know what they'll be. How they'll be deployed yeah. is still a little bit up in the air. But they have their jobs. Yes. And they know that. I've met with uh, all but one of them to talk about that. Um, and there was one gentleman over here before you were okay. Um, in terms of just this commun improving communication and how the process led up so far, um, I remember in all, in all of the community meetings we had and in conversations with staff and students, um, one of the things that was comforting to staff actually was that administrators were saying, we don't even know if we have a job either <laughs> because we all have to reapply. So one of those sticking points right now, I think, what I'm sort of maybe reading between the lines about is that um, that wasn't really the case and it was not communicated well. To, it was another one of those things that was maybe well intentioned and, and was it maybe a promise you could keep, but it was something that wasn't well communicated to people. Yes, Christine. Hi, sorry. I just have to ask. Uh, Bethel sent out a, a um, parent letter saying who all the elementary teachers would be in which classrooms, asking for parent feedback on... We do it every year before May 1st. Class placement. I realize that, but our teachers don't even know if they have jobs. And as a parent of an elementary student, I want to know... All teachers have student. gotten letters in time. All the teachers know that they have jobs. No, that's not true. No. That's, well, I, we have two reasons. And all I'm saying is if we're going to send out a letter to Bethel, we should be sending out a letter to Wilson. Are there any other questions? Yes. This might be trivial, I don't know, but what about um, sports or Excuse coaches? Me. I'm trying to learn everyone's names and I'm, I'm struggling. I'm asking everyone to say their name. You don't know anybody. Okay. I know, I know. He knows his name. <laughs> I'm Andrea don't Taylor. Worry, I'm a resident of Bethel and I have a child in South Royalton and one in Bethel um, right now. So, um, so trivial question, I guess, like coaches, or are they gonna have to go through an application process? Are they automatically in? Next week, uh, the 23rd, we, ha we will be interviewing the candidates for the, uh, it's not really an AD's position, it's a co-curricular position. We want these people to oversee the drama program and making sure we have people to uh, do that. And so, we, we're calling it a co-curricular position. It will include <coughs> athletics as well as uh, the other co-curriculars that happen, uh, like like the play. Um, they will be interviewed, the, the applicants for that position. Um, there has been no um, okay on any coaches yet. That person will have to be in place first, and then we'll go through the process of doing that. Uh, it's not automatic that coaches will come back. Okay. Yes. Can we make sure that students, like with the athletic director, are involved in the hiring of the coaches? You will. You'll be asked by the the athletic director to get involved in that process. That's what I meant by other decisions. Yeah, I think I've, you've nailed me with that so many times. I, <laughs> Wait, though. I'm, I'm mixed up. I'm mixed up. You got me. Yes. Yes, 
you. All right, uh, Alexis Taylor Young, South of Idaho 10. Um, there's been a lot of students that are going to be involved in this merger process from now on. Summer is very quickly approaching. How are we as students going to know for certain that we are being involved and that we are up to date on in every information that we need that's happening? Uh, I've, right. used, I've used student email to communicate about merger uh, subcommittees. Will that email get switched over or converted or disappear on July 1st, though? No, the yeah, email will stay. Because the WRSVU. Are they all WRSVU? Yeah. Email? Yeah. Okay. Still the same supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, Bethel School, it, if it was, if I was a student, it would be 1 O Bradley at WRVSU. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Royalton is the sixth. Six. So there's six O. Right. That's probably going to stay in place until we get things smoothed out for right. That's not top of the list. I. I know that some <coughs> that aren't at the top of the list end up over on the side, and then nobody thinks about it, and they push a button, and everything is uh, not as planned. So I think I'd ask. So just a question: um, Is email going to function for you? Or are there other outlets or other ways in which uh, communication should function through the summer? I mean, I personally can't speak for the entire student body. I think you need to talk to the student community as a whole over what's the best. Mm -hmm. The method of communicating with them over the summer. I think that would, you know, to me, it seems like we shouldn't just assume that that email is going to be the only way to do it. That yeah. that some communication to the student body sh would be really a good idea, so that everybody's kind of clear and engaged, and they know one or two places where they can collect the information that they need, or someone that they can contact to get more information. So, um, for what it's worth, I recommend that that happen within the, both the school systems moving forward, or both campuses. Remembering that we have to be able to understand what you're asking for. So we know how to use email, uh, us right. old fuddy duddies <laughs> up here, but uh, some of the other technologies may be a little beyond. And I know that, I mean, this makes me think about, I, I remember that there was uh, a communication to the board recently and saying that it's really hard to find out how to connect with the new um, uh, new board with all of us and hoping that the um, the main website has the list of the current board and our emails and you know our contact information so that we are um, I haven't gone on it to look but I assume it's on there um, never assume <laughs> I, I know that there's been a lot of <laughs> anyway, I think that that would just be another, another. I know that there's a lot of stuff happening with this whole merger, um, but I think that's one, you know, everybody goes to, to the, well, I do, to the, to the WRBSU website, and it is hard to, the last time I've been on it, it's hard to navigate. But it's especially hard on the phone, because I was looking up agendas tonight. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't even try it on the <laughs> phone. But anyway, anyway, it would be, you know, we should make sure that that is, is just another thing to tackle and streamline so that we're all able to communicate effectively instead of trying to dig through layers. Um, and then once that's done, then you can't blame anybody for not being informed, right? Any, yeah, any other questions or comments? Anything else? Yes. I just want to thank the kids for coming out tonight. It's pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> had all these guys starting out in fourth, uh, fifth grade, some in sixth grade, and one in basketball, and all the girls in basketball. They're very hardworking. And moving forward, I hope that they have a say in this, truly have a say. And they should be commended for doing the right thing and having a voice. It's pretty powerful. And us as adults should encourage that. That's what education is all about. And that's where we've always stood as teachers. So it's awesome. I'm very proud of you guys. I have a question uh, about Burlton and um, Some of the <coughs> sports staff got letters Sorry, of intent. Yeah. Some. Didn't. Is there a date or when all that's supposed to be handed out? Or the letters of intent went out Friday, so if you haven't received one, I would imagine it'll be showing up 
And yes, I signed yours myself. So. No, I'm not talking. I'm not. I'm saying that Bethel said some Bethel. We they all went out on okay. Friday. Okay. Okay. So I was asking. So we Support. ratified the contract today, awaiting. I didn't know that. Just waiting yeah. for some final things. So the support staff. Um, I'm part of the negotiating team too. But so we did that, and that's why I was wondering because we heard that some hadn't got. So I'm just wondering. Okay, um, so we wrap up. Yes. Can I say one more thing? I'm sure. Blake Bingham from South Lewiston. And I just want to thank Joanne for an absolutely wonderful year that she's been here. <laughs> she has pulled the staff together, not that they have been apart, but has um, really. Um, made them feel good and welcome and useful and all of that stuff. And I think the students have noticed, the faculty has noticed, the staff has noticed, and we really appreciate you being with us and your professionalism during this trying time. Thank you. Next meeting day is Tuesday, June 19th at 6 p.m. We'll be in Royalton at that point in time. Um, right now, I think we're scheduled to transition to all three boards, although I think we've covered a lot of the business um, in this meeting. So, uh, we need to have our WRUD board needs to have a non public meeting. Uh, an executive session, yes. Yes, Lisa. Um, I didn't realize you were wrapping up um, public comment until you moved oh. on. Can I say one last thing? Sure. Um, sort of ties into the budget projections. And um, uh, I just wanted to point out, as you're aware, but to sort of ask for some support, um, you had checked in early on about the status of the health care. And as you know, we have health care, but the reimbursement that we were uh, the reimbursement that we were um, that was agreed upon by the board um, has not happened because it wasn't signed up for on time. So we switched over to a new health insurance January 1st, and as I understand it, that paperwork didn't get sent out until late January. And since January, people that have gone to the doctors or gone to fill prescriptions have been paying that cost entirely out of pocket when it was supposed to be reimbursed. For some people, that means, I mean, I think someone addressed the board earlier about this, but, you know, I bought a home last year, and my credit report was very important and could have influenced in the terms of tens of thousands of dollars how much I paid. And I think you really owe it to the staff to tell them not only, yes, you're going to get your money eventually, but what are you going to do to make it right? This has been months where people have been holding thousands of dollars in debt, perhaps, as I hear it, second mortgages. There's really no recourse for us. And I think while you don't have to, I think you owe it to us to find some way to make it right. Acknowledge an error. Give us a letter that we could provide to creditors that are now probably trying to knock down the door asking for money. I don't know what you can do to make it right, but I think it's your responsibility to make it right. So 80% of the school districts in the state of Vermont are in the same predicament with this. It was a failure of the carrier that we went with, and I know that that doesn't give any excuse, but... Well, respectfully, I disagree. Well, we so we have... We transitioned in January 1st. Did you have a contract to have the reimbursement set before January 1st? So the board saw that we were into a contract that wasn't getting fulfilled and asked us not to continue the contract because they weren't we were afraid that we were going to lose our money. So uh, that was done. We have signed up for, with DataPath, the new entity, 
Uh, my understanding is they're going to flick the switch on the money immediately or soon. And I know this is a promise. I, I looked into trying to give you guys loans until the money came in, and that's not, you can't do that with public funds, or I would have been in jail probably for doing that. So we were, we, f we felt like we wanted to help, but didn't know how to help, because if we had committed public funds to this, we would have had a problem with that. And I know that doesn't help you pay the bill, but. Well, well I really just want to sort of drill it down here. I'm not on the insur this insurance. I'm on my husband's insurance, and he works at Randolph. We've been getting reimbursed. We've been getting reimbursed with a debit card for a long time now. So it's not that it's a state problem. It was a state problem. It's unfortunate that company wasn't able to fulfill the large obligation it put out there to people. But I, w I, I want to put it out there and say there is some responsibility at this SU level, and you owe it to us to acknowledge that and to make it right. But I think, I mean, because I, I too work in the Randolph District, and there are definitely people who are in the same situation. I was talking to a colleague today who was sick, who wasn't going to go to the doctor because she owes thousands of dollars. Um, and I have a friend who works in Hartford who is in the same situation. So while, and yet I, whatever prescriptions I have, for some reason I go and get them refilled and they cost literally nothing and it used to be like $150 a month. So I don't understand. I think there might be some difference between the services and the prescriptions under the new formulary that have changed things up. It, it's a terrible situation. Did you file the paperwork before January 1st when we switched over? Yeah, I filed my I filed my paperwork the day it gets sent to me every single time because I'm talking about the, talking about the SC. I'm obsessive. Did about we have a contract for people? I to told get you a minute ago that the over. board decided not to continue the contract. At that what, was probably, in hindsight, a mistake. At what point did they? Leave? I don't know what exactly what date was it was. It after January. I don't know that. I don't well, know. I could find out, but I, if David were in here, he could tell. But I'm, he's yeah. not. He's gone. So. Um, um, Andrew. I mean, she brought up, like, are there other things that we can do? She asked for a letter to give to creditors. And My understanding like is we have sent a letter out to the people that are the creditors to do this. Well, um, I mean, providers. Like, providers. I'm sorry. Like, providers. And the teachers yeah. asked for a letter to I'm give to the people that they owe. I was going to buy a home this year, and I had a lousy credit rating because I hadn't paid $2,000 worth of belts. And that's not just $2,000. That affects the mortgage rate I get. You know what I mean? This is affecting people's lives in enormous ways. And it, I feel like for the board to make a decision to not go with that provider, you at least owed people the, uh, that conversation to say, we've made this decision. This is how it's going to impact you just to let you know for the next five months, you're going to be paying everything out of pocket. At that point, the company wasn't paying. And we were afraid we were going to lose everything that we, that we had. But we're no we're nowhere better than we were. Well, They're not paying. That's you're not paying. No one's paying. That's so what can set. what can be done at this point? I don't know because I have tried with lawyers to try to figure out something to get you guys what you need. And anybody that's been intimately involved in this can tell you that. I mean, we did research trying to get loans out there and and whatever. And I was told <coughs> no, you can't do that. With public funds. So. I don't have an answer. The, um, my answer is that because we were, we do not have a tail end of this, we don't have money that future planning has, that we may get served <coughs> now in May quicker than the other companies that do have a tail. And so they don't have to reconcile with us anymore because we didn't, we didn't have the money invested so that they had to do it. So I, I'm sorry. That's all I can tell you is that we have been laboring with this since since it came up and I've been talking to my fellow superintendents to find out if any of them have some solution um, we have a great deal of sympathy for what's going on and you know I got a bill <laughs> you know I mean can you I find out what Randolph's doing Randolph stayed paid future planning something I think mm -hmm. and therefore they had some money in the pot <coughs> to reimburse we didn't do that and and I'm not, you know, reimbursed for yeah. 
I'm not going to. I'm not going to lie and tell you that we did. I mean, the board made a decision that they were not going to throw good good money after bad, and and but worry what, about whether or not this we were going to lose that money. That was a January conversation. That's not a. That was not a Bruce, current conversation. Can we clarify which board that was? Was it the current board or the SU board? I think it was the. I don't know, Dave. Do you know executive board? Perhaps I don't know. I think we talked about it. It's in. It's been in minutes for months yeah. and months and months. If you want, we can but go back through all the minutes. It's there. Yeah. Information is available. I don't. Off the top of my head, we've been so much going on the last four months, including negotiations. I, I couldn't tell you for sure. But it was the supervisory union level board, either the SU Probably or the executive, the executive board, board. right? Christine, I just have a question. So if we are, we know we're going to give so much money into this, what HRA, HSA, whatever it is, for reimbursement. Where is that money? If we didn't invest it, where is it? We have the money. Where? In the in the budget. So is that why our budget is? That's accounted for. That's accounted. That's, it's, it's been, in the it's been set budget. aside for this purpose. It's coming. But the point is, is that we can't give it to them without an agreement with, with a carrier. And that is a new carrier, which is called Datapath. And we have signed up the papers. They literally have been sending us papers day after day after day, and we send them back the same day, hoping that they'll turn the switch on and these people will get reimbursed. And they will get reimbursed. We've could been we, promised that. Could we send somebody to their company so that you could do it person to person and just... Do We've whatever got our they need. lawyer working with them. I mean, that's what's going on. Well, I mean, this needs to get done. I know that. Because, I'm, because I'm part of the negotiating team, I'm also working for this. And we just explained it to our members that Datapath has guaranteed South Royalton and Bethel that they would open our box first because we do have this problem. And they guaranteed us by the end of May that they would have the people that have these big bills, they would be first in line. Mm -hmm. So the people that we know that are really struggling financially, they're going to be first paid. And so one of the things that we mentioned was that it's not kind of fair that one person gets paid, and but we're all, so their data path is saying through the attorneys, through the supervisor union that we are going to be taken care of. They will hopefully have everything back online by the end of May and up and running. Right now, VHI is covering all of the prescriptions because of the, just, just for, for right, just during this blackout period why, while Datapath gets up and running. So, you know, um, we got a thing, I got a thing, a couple of the other negotiators got things from Dartmouth. We got them from CVH saying that they were going to put a 90-day hold on some of the bills. Gifford said no way, but most people know that we're having this issue and that they're stepping up to help us. So. Thank you. But I still think we should. But I still think we should get some kind of yeah get back. any follow-up for uh, I guess just to summarize um, sometime in January you realized future planning was not going to hold up its obligations wasn't holding up its obligations made the decision to not file the paperwork to contract with them didn't have a backup plan in place knowing that we had we a backup plan to go with data path it has taken that long for them to finally Take our paperwork and get us get us going. Okay, so the backup plan meant there would be a, a yeah. big delay for people. Again, it's I guess hindsight 2020. Um, people deserve to know they'd be out for months having to pay out of pocket. So I I don't know what the conversation should have been with DataPath or if they also let us down, um, but I feel like people. I mean, for for months people were waiting for reimbursement, thinking it was coming next week, thinking, I mean, like, how long could it possibly take? Mm -hmm. um, so that's very disappointing. And I, I will still leave it with you to sit on 
I think you need to think about how to make it right, not just how to pay the money back, but how to make it right with people. Nancy. Can the board write a letter now that you know that there's a problem to the teachers and the, the uh, staff that is affected? Because if they've been waiting every day, that's that's harder than knowing, okay, it's going to be a long time. Mm -hmm. So it might be nice if you wrote a letter. When does the SU board and executive board meet next? 29th. Okay, so not next week, but the early week board. after. Yeah, yeah. Executive board has a meeting on Monday. Okay. Uh, the full board is going to meet on the 29th, which is the day after Memorial Day. So could a letter be put on that agenda, or we could ask that that happen there? The one on the executive board? Probably. <coughs> Since it sounds like the executive board made the decision. All right. Is there any additional public comment? Yes. How do I get something to the board that I want considered? We could send a letter to us, um, to call one of us. Um, but I think emailing a letter is probably the easiest way. I did some looking, and I don't think there's a link on the current White River Valley Supervisory Union website to the new um, White River Union District Board. So we need to get that contact information updated. That's on my to-do list. OK, thank you. Okay. I have a question about the financial issue. Yes. Uh, when were you planning on telling the teachers um, when they were, or that the contract had been dropped? What, the contract regarding health care? No, about the, like, as Ms. Lisa Dragon uh, had uh, said when she bought, or when she had purchased a house. And yep. she's been in debt like thousands of dollars. Uh, just to clarify, I'm not personally debt, but I do know oh. that people are. <laughs> but it's back to the health care. Yeah, I think that's right. the area. It's not necessarily the contract. Okay. Right? So, so the health care situation, um, so the way the board structure works is that there's representation from this board and the Bethel board and the Royalton board and all the boards in the district that meet as a supervisory union district board. and. <clears throat> Then the chairs from all the boards meet and make up the executive board. And the executive board that represents all the school districts in the supervisory union um, was the board that looked at that contractual piece. Um, and I think that that must have happened in a January meeting. I saw it in the minutes. I don't have them all right in front of me um, right now. But I think that. <clears throat> Well, not to pass the buck. <coughs> None of right. us are on the executive board or the SU board until July 1st. So, so we we had nothing. This board actually had nothing to do with what you're talking about. But, right. I mean, we've, some of us have been going to those meetings, but. But we're not actually on the board. We're not officially members until July 1st. <clears throat> yes, Alexis. Um, I would just also like to say, like, just acknowledge how much the teachers and the current administration mm -hmm. has done for all of us students in the past couple year. <laughs> um, <laughs> like the past couple months, but like the year, because they they've been great. They've been super supportive. They've encouraged us to think and to actually talk to one another about what's happening and talk them and get the actual facts and stuff and they deserve some credit for that. Thank you. Bridget. Bridget again. <laughs> um, I was going to say one thing because it's, it's bothered me a couple of times at these meetings and I'm just going to, we're at the end, I'm going to do it. Um, twice this meeting, um, there were people, they know who they are, who kind of dismissed questions that I thought were personal, perfectly rational as emotion driven. Um, and so there's two pieces to this. One is, again, I thought those questions were perfectly rational. 
anybody who went to high school with me, there are a couple of you in this room who think I'm actively mourning South Royalton High School will probably laugh until they wheeze. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and so I think, like, it's easy to dismiss things as an emotional thing, and I don't think that's fair or legitimate. And the other half is emotion is actually really important. Nobody works for months without a promise of, with a promise at best of health insurance and a promise of a contract someday if they don't care about being here. Nobody puts up with annoying questions from me if they don't have emotions that they value their work and what they do. Um, and so I want to make sure we you know, honor the good emotions that get us here and that have put all of us with investment in the next generation. Um, and don't be so quick to say, eh, it's just an emotion. Emotion's why we're here. Um, so our board now has to enter an executive session. Um, what's that? I think we should probably go to another room. Um, the far side room. Okay. All right. So we will move there. Um, Make a motion. To do that. Yes. So I would see a motion in our board. It, there will likely be action taken. So you'll come back in here and finish that. So we'll have to come back here and finish that. Okay. So there's still separate board meetings that are going to occur mm -hmm. after this executive session. Right. Not the White River Union District, um, but there will be a Royalton and a Bethel board after meeting after this. this. After well, we'll this. Make our motion and we'll make we'll come back together and make our motion. Christine. You're right. So, could somebody make the motion to? I would entertain a motion to enter executive report. session. So On that personnel issue. issue. On a personnel issue. Okay. Yeah, okay. Andrew and then Shannon. It's a personnel issue. 834. Got it. Who's noting? I am. Thank you. Todd, Todd said notes. Notes. Makes <laughs> sense. Yeah. yeah. Any adjustments to the agenda? Anybody else here want an agenda? Does anybody here have an agenda? <laughs> I have one. I, have I mean a personal agenda. Uh, I have one. <laughs> to get finished? Not yet. I mean with a meeting. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Hearing none, consent agenda, approve the minutes of April 9. I move that we approve the minutes of April 9. Do I have a second? second? Um, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Board comment. The only comment I have is I really, 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 really Are want you sure? <laughs> I really want to see a, a, in the newspaper or somebody, anybody, like Andra, <laughs> send it to me. Gonna sign. Send me the link to the meetings. Minutes. The minutes of the meetings. Oh. I can send you, you a link get without them on paper. Christy doesn't send them. You don't get them from Christy. Not all the me. Not not this. Only this one. The other. Not one the too. W red one. Yeah, I don't care. Where I just want to know where oh. everybody's getting it from. Okay, I'll, I will show you, and she could send you, and you get bombarded. Okay. When we get done, I will show you how to get them. Okay. Okay. But I still want to make sure she. I will. Yes. I'm on it. I have tried this so many I times. I feel directed. I got it. Thank you. Put it on the sign on the front lawn. <laughs> it's not that nice. Whole minutes you just. Yep. Put it on the lawn chair. Okay. Uh, okay. Any more board comment? No. Okay. Hearing none. Public comment. Carrie. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Like Discussion items. I don't believe we have any. This next month is our next our last. Meeting, Next right? month is our last regular meeting. Are we going to do that at Babes? <laughs> oh, that's a good discussion. Or that's the post meeting? <laughs> good There's meetings in Royalton, so. Oh. Five well, months. you got to oh, come back to Bethel. Crossroads. <laughs> yeah, crossroads. All right. All right. That's my wife. New business. I don't think we have any new business because we're going to be old business shortly. Yep. Okay. You guys, report to the board. Yeah. So, um, I didn't, did I send this to everybody? I got it. I couldn't get it. I, I did send it, though. Get it? Yes. 
you get it? I got it. So, hiring updates. This is for the entire, our new unit. There's a bunch of hires we have to do. There's an elementary teacher for next year in Bethel. There's uh, an English teacher, math teacher, and social studies in the middle school. Wow. There's two special educators. Those have already been interviewed and they're about to be placed from Deb Matthews. There's, um, in the high school, there's a social studies, a math, two science teachers, and we also have a elementary world language teacher for both campuses, a halftime eco teacher, and a halftime health teacher. We have the applicants, we're forming the committees, and we're setting up the interviews. Any of these halftime people, are they going to be working with the Royalton to pick up some more time? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, actually... With our other campus. I'm sorry. The halftime... It's not Royalton, it's our other campus. Right, Royalton campus. So the halftime eco position will be based in Royalton. The halftime health position will be based in Royalton. The other half may be here. That's to be determined. We're working on that. It might be Laurie Smith. Okay. Okay. Facilities. Quick. Laurie's not going to leave, right? No. She's half time here now. She may go full time by taking that other half time. Being worked out. Okay. Facilities, um, I'm going to give you the overview, but Chris Fors would do a better job, and we'll get some reports for you. We've okay, got tell, these, tell these guys who Chris Fors is now. I know. Chris is the, he's kind of the clerk of the works. He's taking care of all the facilities for the merger. He did the forest study for yeah. us. So he has had some engineers look at our heating system in the 1958 building. And we put two hundred thousand dollars aside. The, it's going to be at least eight hundred thousand. Wow. So we're going to kick that can down the road and go to the voters at another time. It looks like we're going to have a true engineering study done because we're just getting estimates. And he's the engineers and he are recommending that we tune up and upgrade the elementary side, and we're going to have a lot of savings and put some of that other money towards the engineering study, which don't come cheap. I think they're like $60,000 for an engineering study. Mm. So then we would probably have to go to bond with the public. So we're looking down the road, okay? I know. $60,000? For an engineering yeah. study. And that's for both building these? That's for the, fifth, the 1958, and they will do that part too, but this is the, the main piece for that study. Now does the town vote on that? Um that would engineering be, study, or is that something that's no, just done? No, that would go out to bid. The board would have to, I think the new board should probably bless that. Would you all agree? And that money yeah. would probably come out of that six hundred and seven thousand. dollars Yes, exactly. Dollars. And the greenhouse, we're getting numbers on that to, to tune that up. They um, have people that are giving numbers on the library at Royalton and the painting in both buildings. We're... Um, the science classroom that we have to put together in Royalton, we're uh, turned out the floor in the room we want to use is asbestos uh, flooring, so we're going to have to take that out in a very in a like federally right. approved way. So that's happening, and um, I think those are the big big ticket items. Uh, some that, um, like when you're doing this high school science. They're going to take everything and bring it over to South Royalton, right? No. What's in here? They're going to leave this for the middle school. Okay, that's what I'm trying to find out about if there's going to be science here. Because sometimes it's it's great for kids to get take a oh, yeah. science a little higher. Than, so if they wanted to take chemistry or They're going physics. to build a new lab over there. Okay, but how about here? This is going to stay. But are they going to still have a chance to do like chemistry or physics? Yes. We have that facility here with, with gas and with um, a chemical hood. Okay. More than most middle schools. That's what I mean. I wanted to make sure of that. Okay. We're mowing and plowing. So we've come to the determination that plowing will happen in the winter. <laughs> I don't know how we're done with that. So that we both right now, both schools are still have their own budgets, that we will, we will take care of our mowing bids separately. <laughs> and then we will look at a plowing bid, a combined plowing bid. And in the future, we would look at a combined mowing bid. Okay? The rest of this is primarily dates. So three dates of things that happened. 
and there's a bunch of dates of, of interest that you should want to be aware of right up to graduation. So we had um, Alec Hastings, who is a former teacher. Yes. Here. Amazing. An author. Yes. Yeah, the love teacher. Yeah. He has a new book out, and he came in during Library Month and read to the students, and he had some signed copies that are available for sale here. Oh. It's a children's book this time. It's a children's book this time. Oh. Appropriate for children. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Some not of his about, other books were not a about more. bootleggers. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Thank you for that. And on May third. Do you want to give that one? Um, on May 3rd, we had our writer's fair for all the elementary, um, except for the, the kiddos in fifth and sixth grade, our gateway presentations and our senior projects. So it was a full house. It was lovely that people could walk around and see kindergarten writing all the way up to our senior projects. So that was nice. Really nice night. Mm -hmm. and they had some really good projects. They too. sure did. Yeah, Wonderful. I enjoyed them. Somebody redid an entire pickup truck. There yep. was um, a, a lot of great things. Mm -hmm. Computer. Guitar. Uh, writing songs. Writing songs. Yeah. Somebody yep. made a guitar out of scratch. Mm -hmm. Project on feminism. Right. And the All-State Parade was on the 9th. Can you give us an update? Were you there? I was there. That's what South Royalton. And if you didn't see what South Royalton was wearing, good Lord, find some pictures. Because that will go down in history. What were they wearing? Uh, tutus and blue afros. And Josh was wearing a yellow suit, like a leisure suit. And, and like, uh, lace. Like yeah. Big, big, it was great. Uh, Hard to miss. White, uh, colorful. They heard them coming. It was so right. loud. Yes. They, they, were, and, they, were quite, they were probably the best uniforms in the whole yes. place. Yeah. <laughs> Or non-uniforms, I guess. Hey, the bass drum even had a tutu. So, <laughs> and then the upcoming dates, this Thursday, and for the next two Thursdays, there's concerts. Mm -hmm. This Thursday's the last Wickham concert, and it will be at the town hall. Tell your friends. Bring your, bring your neighbors. It's a flashback to the 80s. Boom. Yeah. Yes. There will be crimping of hair involved. Got and then the following week, uh, so it's the elementary concert, which is always a big hit. And get here early if you want to park near the building. Right. May nineteenth is a busy day. This is that's next Saturday. We're gonna have touch a truck, which is giant trucks and vehicles. This kids. Saturday. This Saturday. So yes, touch a truck, drive one for your school by Ted Green Ford. So if you come and test drive a car, the school gets twenty dollars. All the money that they raise is gonna go to revamping the greenhouse here. So this is all the PTO, Touch a Truck. They're also doing a, actually I think Carol Delia is doing the flea market, so she's selling spaces. We have a bunch of vendors that are gonna come. And not here, but on the same day is the Girls uh, girls on the Run 5K that will be happening in Castleton in you know a half inch of rain. We're gonna still waddle and run. <laughs> it's supposed to rain on the 19th? It is. Mm -hmm. yes. nice. Although maybe it's, maybe it's not as bad as it was. All right. Where are we going? Are we? We have just a few minutes, and we'll be done. We're done. Okay. 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 Yes. I think we let them finish, and then we'll come back. Together. I appreciate okay. that. Okay. I guess that was after that. Baccalaureate student tenth, six thirty at the Brick Church. June thirteenth, class night, six thirty in the cafeteria. Last one. June fifteenth, last day of students, half day, noon dismissal, and graduation is that same night at seven o'clock. Schooled out. For summer. <laughs> when did we sign to Not promise? Not forever, though. As soon, that's a, you know. They we weren't here. I, I checked today. They weren't here. We're going to have to have you come in. Okay. And All we'll right. let you know when they're in the office. They're not here yet. Okay. Thank you. Or at 5.45 yeah. that day. <laughs> no, I can't make it to graduation because my niece is graduating at the exact same time. Uh, things happen. It's a high now. That's a, the report from the principal. I don't know. You're, you're way out for okay. me. I mean, a month from now, I have no idea what I'm going to be doing. Okay. It's my due date, so I might not be around. <laughs> Graduation. Well, are, are you pregnant? <laughs> I am. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That Willie Walker's food is so good. Yeah. <laughs> Can't have the baby till 9 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> Action items. I don't believe we have any. I think she's having a wildcat. <laughs> next, next day, Tuesday, June 19th at Royalton. Okay. 7 p.m. We need. Yeah. Well, 
<laughs> okay, we may, we may talk about that some more. The time, you mean, not the date. The time. Future agenda items. Um, I guess that what we normally do, because it's our last real meeting, I can't right. think of anything that we really need to do. It's those folks are taking over. No, well, if you say so, we'll do something. Let's know. Okay. You guys can have a party. A going out party? No. <laughs> I had, I was going to, but I haven't been able to pull it together. I wanted to I wanted to have something for invite all school board members that are still alive. <laughs> there are school board members or look alive in Bethel. Mm -hmm. To come to some there's um, a lot of them still around. There's a lot of I know there is but it's yes. quite, a, quite a job to put that together. And the I'm not a put together person. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Because it sounded like we were imposing to me. No. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Under my body. Now we just have to wait for the royal end. Well, they said to step in. Um, they're eagerly awaiting our. We need to vote for you. Oh, can I help? Okay. Well, I bought another one, so I have two. So oh, should you need it? Okay. I will you vote and adjourn our meeting. Yes. So we need to get Andrew and Chris. Yes, and uh, do you need me? I, no, I want, I, have, I want to make a comment in your meeting before you adjourn. Okay. All right. If I forget to say Dave, you'll... Oh, I, I'll let you know. No, okay. All right. And we need to record it because I'll record it. She just, uh, she told somebody about what... Tammy. Yeah, yeah she told Tammy not to do it. Tammy told somebody else what to do. Or keep the information. It might fall into my shoulders, so I'm going to um, scribble on that and add to her notes. away yet. Yeah. I'll show you that thing. That's killing me. Whoops. Executive session at 8:44. It's a little bit atypical, I think, because here we are at 8:57, um, taking action. So um, I'm just taking some notes. So would somebody like to make a motion? I make a motion that we take the superintendent's recommendation for the principal position. The elementary for the elementary Bethel. Bethel campus. Right. Can we say more than that? Uh, not the particulars. Okay. Okay. Um, is there a second? I'll second. Okay. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. So that's unanimous. Um, so that's very anticlimactic, but <laughs> totally boring. Whoopee. <laughs> 
Um, we don't so know we, what your recommendation was, so right. that you're not. Right. Of course, it's a mystery recommendation. Bruce has a conversation with right? her. Yeah. Now we get her a bassinet! <laughs> you going to send a letter out in a couple weeks? Yeah. <laughs> So make a motion to adjourn. Well, no, nope. um, I'm sorry. No. Oh, sorry. Dave, Dave had one thing he would like to talk about. Good job, Dave. Oh, I have boy. two. I would make a motion that we accept the minutes on the last combined meeting. Yes. As printed. Do we need to have, I would second that. Do we need to have Royalton members around for that? Like, is this is this the we wagon wheel Jeff. thing that we're doing? This isn't a combined meeting. That's true. I the they, they were all in here why? before. Uh, no, I decided a, to say, why don't, okay, well, why don't we just finish our meeting and then we can do the wagon wheel meeting and just. I won't be here. I'm going to leave So, so can I we mean, table like, can we those meeting? minutes until next time? Um, we can, but my other comment is I'm suggesting that we don't do a combined meeting again. Okay. Because that's the only thing that didn't get covered in your meeting. But you have to do that okay. and you have it in the combined meeting. Okay, right. We don't have so to do, do we anything need, like that. Can we? How many people I mean, do we need from South Royalton? We just adjourn to, our meeting and then start the wagon. I think we just need one tomorrow. in a combined meeting, right? Right. We need we one, need one, from, every town. one from every town. Right. So Jeff so, so just so so Jeff's yeah, enough. So Jeff's enough. He's in the room. Yeah. Great. Counts. He doesn't even have to sit if he doesn't want to. You can do that. No, you don't have to sit down. You can just do whatever. Okay. Yeah. As long as you're in the room, we're good. Okay. So let's adjourn our meeting. Okay. We will adjourn at not sorry eight fifty seven. It's nine o'clock. Okay. That clock is slow. It is. All right. It's a motion to adjourn. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. All right. Let's open that combined meeting. Okay, and the combined meeting is back in session at nine o'clock, right? All right. Okay. I would make a motion that we approve the minutes of whatever, whatever that date was, our last meeting. April ninth. Yeah. Okay. I'll second. What was the date? I'm sorry. April 9th. Monday, April 9th. So minutes from Monday. So, and Todd, and no, sorry, Todd, Rodney seconded it. And so, and I would we like have to, to vote? I would like to make a suggestion that we do, we discontinue a combination meeting. Okay. You know, we're, if we, I mean, the, the minutes, we, now we've opened a meeting. We now have minutes again. Right. I'm but, taking them. But that's... Eventually that has to end, though. And uh, that's well, I guess we, the point of the combined meeting we're looking for Bruce's, like, reports to all the boards. But if you're comfortable with doing that... And but if, we, if you do your, your meeting first, everybody was here. Right. Okay. And it's only... Yeah. It's just one... It's just June. We're all done. Yeah. I'll second the motion that we discontinue combined meetings. Okay. Carlton? <laughs> I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> Any objections? Right. Okay. Any objections? Um, sorry. This is not my purview. Oh. Any opposition? Hearing none? All those in favor? All right. All right. All right. There you go. Um, Back in our meeting, we never did set it next meeting. Mo motion to adjourn. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So right. right. We have to actually do that. that was, oh, I said it. That right. was in right. minutes. Yeah. yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulate Andrew.